<laughs> Welcome to another video. Now I'm here in stunning Sardinia to ride this, the brand new 2024 Himalayan 450. So here we are, Royal Enfield, Himalayan 450 launch. We're about to set off. So I'm on the standard seat height of 825 millimeters. I do have my big adventure boots on, but uh, I'm on the balls of my feet. So not quite flat footing, but you can actually drop the seat down to 805 millimeters. It's really easy. You just take the pelion seat off. It's got a couple of bars underneath the rider seat, move them around and that drops it down to the lower seat height. And I'm five foot eight with a 30 inch inseam just for reference. I've got the navigation. Now, because of the screen refresh rate, I don't know if you're actually going to see that, but I've got the navigation connected to my phone via the Royal Enfield app. So this is a four inch full color TFT dash with full color map navigation, not turn by turn. The actual map is on the screen, which is, I think it's a first, certainly a first round screen to do it. Yay. Woohoo. <laughs> definitely got so much more poke than the 411. Loads of poke. <laughs> I'm going to ride the bike for a bit off camera and then we'll come back to you and drop some tech specs on your ears. So we've got the brand new water-cooled single-cylinder 450cc Sherpa engine. It's their first water-cooled engine they've ever made for a bike. It's making 40 horsepower at 8,000 rpm and it's delivering 40 newton meters of torque at five and a half thousand RPM, but it also makes 90% of its torque at 3000 RPM. And another little fun fact is that <laughs> uh, at 2000 RPM, this new 450 makes more torque than the 411 Himalayan made anywhere in its rev range even at its peak power. That is pretty impressive. You know, people wanted more power. Uh, we've got Showa suspension, 43 millimeter upside down forks, and those give you 200 millimeters of travel up front. And at the rear, we've also got a Showa link type monoshock, and that's also given you 200 millimeters of travel. We've got 230 millimeters of ground clearance. So yeah, pretty decent suspension set up out of the crate. We've got uh, Vibre twin piston calipers up front, uh, that's a single caliper and those are biting or that is biting down onto a single 320 millimeter disc and at the rear we've got a single piston vibre caliper which is biting onto a 270 mil disc it's got switchable abs which i'll talk about in a second it's got a couple of riding modes eco performance we've got obviously the four inch tft screen we've got the connected app you've got the turn by turn Sorry, you've got the full navigation using Google Maps. So it's got a switchable ABS. You can't deactivate the front ABS, unfortunately, but you can deactivate the rear ABS, which should help you a little bit off-road. A few riding modes, a couple of different themes. I think it's three themes, actually, on the, uh, on the dash. <laughs> yeah, so far, so good. Excellent suspension for this sort of stuff. We're going to be doing some jumps later, I think, or a jump, at least one jump. Don't go down there, Dan. <laughs> but look at this. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, so this is just the first impressions video. Now, what I will say with these sorts of videos where you come to a launch and ride a bike just for one day is I can't give you a kind of living with review but I can give you a general idea of what the bike is like after a few hours of riding over different terrain. You kind of just have to take it for what it is at face value. The bike has a six speed gearbox. It's got a slip and assist clutch and the gearbox is very, very slick. <laughs> you managed to wheelie then. <laughs> there you go. If you go uphill, you can actually pull wheelies just on power. This is so much fun, this bike. And I love the 411. I think that's a fantastic bike for the money. But this seems to just, I'll be honest with you, this blows it out of the water. It really does. <laughs> 
So I thought I'd do a quick walk around while I've got the bike. Um, so we've got a 21 inch front wheel. We've got spoked wheels. These are tubed tires, but there is a tubeless option. Again, 21 inches, we've got Showa, big piston, separate function forks, cartridge type, 43 millimeter up front, they're the upside down forks, uh, 200 mil of travel. We've got a nice big long fender. There's the beating heart of this new machine. This is the brand new Sherpa 450 and it's Royal Enfield's first fully water-cooled engine. So uh, 40 horsepower at 8,000 RPM, 40 newton meters of torque at 5,500 RPM. We'll talk more about the engine when we get riding. We've got an adjustable seat height of 825 or 805, I believe. We've got a Showa link type monoshock at the rear, 17 inch rear wheel, again, tubed. We've got a carrying rack. We've got a big seat. Uh, we'll talk about comfort again when we get going. 17 litre fuel tank. We've got these lovely mirrors. Uh, you'll notice <laughs> a bit of an issue there where I've uh, bent the bar. That's because I did drop it earlier. We've got a very dusty screen because we have been riding all day on and off road. But let's uh, turn the dash on. So there's the new dash. I quite like this uh, dash, which is the taco and the gear indicator. And you've got this like pinstripe, pinstripe design. It's got a few different themes. If I hold down the mode button over here, that will take you to essentially the navigation screen. But I don't have my phone connected. We did have it connected early on. Um, so if I did get any footage, I'll put that up now. Round TFT, and it's the first round TFT that's got built-in Google Maps navig navigation. It's full navigation, not just turn by turn, but the actual map is up on the screen, as you can hopefully see just now. Uh, we've got very familiar Royal Enfield switch gear. We've got this little joystick, five axis joystick down there, which we'll get into as we're riding. But we've got lots of information on the screen. Trip one, trip two, fuel range, fuel consumption that is kind of an active one as you're riding there's the show of forks the top of the fork legs there we've got nice wide handlebars let's show you this size so we can talk about the brakes we've got by bray axial mounted twin piston a uh, single caliper over here with a 320 mil disc braided hoses as well we've got a little plastic radiator guard and a little i think that's a, a plastic bash plate uh, led lights all around including the turn signals we've got built-in turn signals as well as brake lights at the back here not a massive fan of this design i do like having a dedicated brake light personally but uh, there it is it's not terrible and they basically built on what the himalayan 411 did and just listened to what the people wanted and made it better and more power better suspension yeah so let's go riding and we can talk more about the himalayan 450. so now that we're on some lovely twisties let's talk about how it handles this is actually the nicest road we've done all day. We've been sort of doing a lot of gravel and a lot of broken tarmac, but this bike, you would not believe this has a 21 inch front wheel. It handles remarkably well. The new suspension and geometry are absolutely fantastic, not just for off-road, but for on-road as well. And it's actually quite fun and agile. I mean, sure, a suspension is pretty decent, <laughs> the by brakes are not too bad they're actually one of the more impressive um, sets of brakes on the Royal Enfields because some of their like the old Hemi brakes were not very good and I've said that in the videos but these ones I won't slam on the anchors now because I've got uh, Harvey behind me that's right Harvey rides bikes is right up the chuff <laughs> so let's talk about the beating heart of this beast the Sherpa 450 engine how does that actually perform out on the road well after riding this little rascal all day and after riding the Hemi 411 fairly recently for a few months I can say this new engine is an absolute game changer if you are expecting this to handle or perform like the old 411 you're going to be in for quite a treat it's got a lovely mid-range <laughs> very free revving yeah it's got um, fairly decent torque however you do need to pick and choose your gears fairly carefully it, it being a single it does get a little bit bogged down if you uh, get the wrong gear and you're not high enough in the rpm but once you get it past like 2000 rpm it does start to breathe a bit better and uh, that torque kicks in 
it's just a couple of times I was in totally the wrong gear and uh, you know it being a fairly small capacity uh, motor you know you do need to knock it down a gear or two but then the torque kicks in it's quite lovely so here we go right 4,000 rpm <laughs> It still feels like a Himalayan, but they've just upped the game and moved everything on quite nicely. But um, I think one of the biggest surprises uh, alongside that new engine is the handling on the road. It really is something else. So here we go, brakes. Yeah, those brakes aren't bad actually. Not bad at all. So the um, little joystick here is doesn't feel the best when you're wearing a glove it's it's one thing having it without a glove but on with a glove I feel like it's a little bit hit and miss sometimes so I kind of wish that had been a, done a little bit more I wish the changes in direction were a bit more positive and the clicks because when you push it in I, I, it's easy to kind of do left or right other than that the switch gear is pretty good I quite like this material I don't know what it's some kind of plastic but it's kind of uh, I don't know almost like um, matte plastic and it's quite a nice um, tactile texture actually, I quite, I quite like that. I have thrown this bike down the road because I was being a wally, meh, mucking around. <laughs> and it was in the car park to the uh, lunch stop, so I look like a right, a right tit. But here you go, I'm in sixth gear. We're doing 80 kilometers, I don't know what that is. And roll on power is pretty good. Yeah, suspension actually is quite uh, quite flush on the road and off-road it is absolutely fantastic I mean we did quite a bit of I won't say gnarly because it was it was all dry packed dirt but there was quite a lot of rocky bits and there was a big jump and I felt the suspension really shines on this machine and it would certainly be able to cope with anything I was going to be doing on the bike Power. <laughs> I think the bike looks really good as well, especially in this black and gold colour, the Hanley black with the gold wheels. But yeah, just doing these roads, <laughs> you can certainly have a lot of fun on this bike and it handles so much better than the old Hemi, which I still think handled well considering what the bike was. I think it's a night and day difference in terms of handling and also the engine performance as well. The dash is fairly legible in this mode and even when you do have the navigation on it you know you still got the necessary bits of information on the lower part of the screen and I think it's good enough it's just my only issue with that navigation is how hot my phone gets now that might be an issue with my phone and not the bike or the app but uh, it's something that I need to think about if I have to mount my phone to the bars I might as well just use the phone for navigation and this is meant to of course get away from that uh, method really uh, it's got a USB-C type adapter up on the, the uh, handlebars there so I could charge my phone on the go should I need to vibes they they are there for sure At low rpm it's fine but once you get into those higher rpms you are going to feel them so uh, they haven't annoyed me too much today, but it's been very stop-start riding. So, uh, you know, if you're going to be doing long tours or adventure touring for days on end, it might, might be something you have to consider, at least. But all things considered, I think there's plenty of positives about this bike. You know, there's pros and cons with anything, and uh, this bike is no different. Handling and engine, I think, are the two main standout features for me. And... Uh, negatives you know the um, the vibes but I'm being quite nitpicky on that point it wouldn't stop me buying one let me put it that way <laughs> this is such a good bike and I know people are gonna say but Dan it's only 40 horsepower that's not enough well I'm sorry if it's not enough for you then that's entirely your choice but it is certainly enough to have fun on you know i've ridden many bikes with stupid amounts of horsepower i own a tracer 9 gt which is about 115 horses i think there or thereabouts and uh this is just 
as every bit as fun just in in a different way essentially <laughs> oh these views now the weather has gone a little bit hazy towards the end of the day but we are heading towards the beach and a nice little sunset spot to get a, a picture right let's talk about ergos then and comfort because you know i've been riding the thing all day on road off road so we've been riding since nine o'clock this morning and i've got to say the seat has done pretty well however my bum is starting to ache now at the end of the day and you know we've not been in the saddle the whole time we've been starting and stopping and filming and this that and the other so perhaps on a longer super long journey you might experience a little bit of discomfort on your rear my knees are absolutely fine like i said i've put the uh, seat in the higher position which i believe is 825 mil so no issues with my knees but it's just my buttocks they are a little bit sore oh but you can stand up and then rest the bum uh, you've got this little screen which i don't know how much it does to be honest with you it's it's pretty small i wouldn't say this is the noisiest bike i've ridden recently that would go down to the nx 500 i found that tremendously noisy but uh, you can get a taller screen and i'm sure there'll be some aftermarket options if that doesn't suit as well as with the seat i'm sure you could get something a bit more comfy but yeah you know all things considered very very impressed with this machine cost wise i think it's uh, about six thousand depending on the model the, the color and if you get tires or not the tubeless tires i think it's about six and a half roughly which is i think that's very competitive for what the bike offers you know it can do on road it can do off road it can do touring it can be your commuter it's got enough poke to have fun the suspension and handling are really good very impressed with that brakes are decent I like the looks of it i think it's a great looking you can tell it's a hemi but at the same time they've just changed it up enough i think it's a lovely lovely looking thing yeah all in all i think this is an absolute winner for royal enfield um i would love to get one on a longer term test just to put it through its paces a bit more in the uk because as good as these days are it is only one day so you know there might be other things that i can't tell you about but I would only find out after having the bike on a longer term period. But that's the same with any of these kind of press launches. I can only really give you my opinion on the day and how I feel at the end of it. But I am suitably impressed. We've been riding all day on road off road on the royal enfield Himalayan 450 i'm completely spent so all that's left to do is to say thank you very much for watching this video if you do go out today do ride safely but remember to have fun of course otherwise what's the point and until next time you take care peace